So I'm inside a through floor lift. I'm here at Pollock Lifts in Northern Ireland. This uh, company manufactures through floor lifts for both the residential and the commercial sector. Jerry, we're gonna look at your manufacturing today, but before we do that, tell us a little bit about the company and, and some details on the products that you make. So the company's running 34 years at this stage. We manufacture a range of through floor lifts uh, and step lifts and residential elevators. Uh, the core product is the through floor lift. And then in recent years, we branched into one meter and two meter products. Uh, and our most recent development is a residential elevator. With, with an aging population, this must be a booming business, is it? Not as booming as we'd like it to be, but it certainly is increasing. And the, the interesting part here for me is that you do all the manufacturing here, don't you? The majority of what we see behind us is made here on, on site in Northern Ireland. That's correct. We design all our custom aluminium extrusions. We process them here. The assembly process happens here. Then they're tested and installed directly from here. So we're going to start in here, Jerry. Tell us what this area is and what you know, you've got a lot of people here, what they're actually doing. So this is the design team there uh, at work designing new products. So everything begins life here using our 3D CAD. The custom extrusions are designed here, sent off for manufacture or for processing. We manufacture them here uh, and the whole product begins its life here. And one of your latest products is becoming an aspiration rather than a necessity. Can you tell us about that? That's a residential elevator. That's a product that um, is going into homes where people want to have a lift in their home to enhance its value um, and allow them to stay in their home for a longer period of time. So first stop here, Jerry, in your, um, in your factory is the machining area. This is a Victor machining cell. You've got three machining centers and a lathe. This is your latest purchase, I believe. This is a, a Victor 205 that we, we have one that we bought in 06. This is another one that we bought uh, recently. This one, we needed the long bed length for the tracks, both on the two floor lift and on our two meter lift. And then we found it very effective at machining all of the other smaller components as well. I'm imagining, I mean, this is a column machine. I'm imagining you need a fast machine to get from one end of these structures to the other, don't you? That's correct, because the, the longest track we fit in are, is 3.1 meters long. So the, the time it takes to go from one end to the other is critical to our overall process time. And the machining that you're doing, you're just doing general drilling, tapping, milling? Yes, the machining we do is relatively simple uh, for machining centres, but it's, it's the speed and the accuracy and the quality of throughput that we really get from the Victor machine. And the reliability as well, I assume? Absolutely. F from the first one that we bought in 06, then we've bought three more since then because we've found that they just keep going, which is what we need here. Most companies like yourselves, they start by subcontracting out their work and making their own product. And then they kind of recognise that they've got more control if they bring the machining in-house. Is that a similar story here at Pollock Lift? Pretty much exactly the same as what happened here. We had, initially we had a small amount of uh, parts that required machining. We subcontracted them. But as the company grew and our needs grew, we then, uh, it was much more effective to have our own machine to have control over the price of the product and also your overall process. It's important to stress as well, we're looking at uh, a large part here, this track, but you're also machining fairly small components, small turn parts, little prismatic pieces as well, aren't you? Yes, we, we do everything from six mil round bar right up to custom extrusions that are three meters long. And do you subcontract anything out still now or is it all still on the machining side, is it all still handled now here in this Victor machining cell? Everything's handled by our own Victor machines in-house. We don't subcontract any machining at this stage. Okay, so once product has been designed, which we've seen, it's now been machined here in this, uh, in this, in this Victor machining cell, as we've called it. What happens next? The, the next part of the process, it either goes to, to welding or directly to painting, depending on where the part fits into our overall assembly. So this is where product is essentially finished then. This is really, call it your assembly or your, your, your final part of the production process. This is our two meter model. So each one is, is fully assembled, tested, and then dismantled for shipping. And how many of these are going through the factory in a year, Jerry? In, in total, we're doing about a thousand units per year. And in terms of employees, how many people are working here for you? There's over 100 people working here at the minute. And is the business growing? Yes, the business has grown year on year and continues to do so. What would you put that down to? 
Um, it's hopefully good design, um, targeting the export markets and looking after your home markets as well. And, and is the export market becoming a, b a big thing for you? You mentioned earlier about Australia as a as, a, as an opening up market, or as a new new big market for you. Yeah, we have we have growth markets in a number of regions: Australia, Asia, um, various different parts of Europe. But it's uh, it's obviously more difficult to export than than to target your home market. But it is a growing element of the business. Well, good luck for the future. It's been really good to uh, have a look around today. Thank you, Thanks Joe. Very much.